by reducing all of these uh, costs of production, they are, at least at the time, before they can innovate and make new things, make things as cheaply as they can. All right, and here's the next part of what Adam Smith wanted to happen. He wanted people to take tariffs down because he realized you can only make so much stuff in a country, right? You've only got so many people, you've only got so much money and resources, you can't make everything, you'll, you'll lack something. So he believed countries, so we'll just take China and the US. He believed countries should take away those tariffs and make everything cost as little as possible. That way, he believed uh, countries could utilize their comparative advantage, which we'll talk about in a second. So he believed basically, country can't make everything because there's only so many people that can produce things in a country and, and money they have and, and resources. So he believed you should focus on making the thing your country makes best. So it can be as cheap as possible. And the other stuff you need, you get from other countries. Because they, can they make the same stuff as you just as efficiently? No, they're gonna have different um, um, ways and people and resources to use. So they might be able to make something else cheaper. So you guys basically just trade for the two things you need. So here's an example. All right, and this is an example of, well, comparative and absolute advantage. So here, comparative. absolute and here's what here's what kind of confuses some people this means I make it more efficiently like a lower cost than another country and this means that um, I make more of it all right so you can actually have an absolute advantage but have a comparative disadvantage all right so here's what I mean so with the US and China what's two things they could make steel okay all right, the unit will just do um, one ton, all right, <laughs> 2,000 pounds. Um, and let's say, well, you can use steel to make a car, so we'll say cars. All right, there's my two things I can make, okay? Uh, let's say China is gonna be over here in the US, all right, let's make a little square. And let's say China can produce, I should center those on. Let's say China can produce um, 10 tons of steel and they can make um, five cars. All right, you with me on that? Yeah. Okay. The US can only make four tons of steel and they can only make. Yeah, two car. No, one car. I can only make one car. Who has the absolute advantage in steel production? China. China does. Yep. They can make way more steel than the U.S. Who has the absolute advantage in cars? China. China does. Yeah, they can make more cars and more steel. Why the hell would they want to trade with the U.S. then? To make a bigger profit. So they can sell more. Okay. I would say it's a combination of the two. Uh, it's more about maximizing their cost efficiency, okay? Because here's what I mean when I do this. It's an ore. They either make 10 tons of steel with their workers and, and, and uh, resources they have, or they make five cars. They can't make both, all right? Same with this. They can either make four uh, uh, tons of steel or one <coughs> single car. So the idea is, all right, what should they focus on producing then for that month or year or whatever unit of um, uh, time this is? You can actually figure that out. So we want to figure out who makes steel more efficiently and who makes cars more efficiently. And we can do that pretty easily. All right. So for the US, for example, they can make <clears throat> four tons of steel and they can make one car. All right. So um, if I take the amount of steel that they can produce, which is four, obviously, and I take the cars by one, if I divide it, uh, it equals four. It's pretty easy math right there, makes sense. So for every car I make, what am I giving up? Four tons of steel, four tons of steel right, because that's, that's like what it takes to have the people or machines or electricity or whatever uh, dedicated to that, right? So uh, that's what they make. So for every car they give up, or they make, they give up four tons of steel. So that's a pretty big cost, right? They give up a lot of steel to make a car. What about China? How would we figure it out for China? I just showed you how to do it for this one. The same thing, okay, so I take, they can make 10 tons of steel, 
And they can make how many cars? Five. Five equals two. All right. So who can make um, cars more efficiently? Because that's what we're looking for here. That's the bottom number here. Cars. China. Cars. Yeah, China does. How much steel does China give up to make one car? Two. Two, two right. So they give up way less steel. So we would say because they can make uh, cars and waste less steel doing it, they have a comparative advantage for cars. So China has it for cars. All right. Um, does the US have a comparative advantage for anything? Are you sure? What if we flipped it? So we looked for cars. Now let's look for steel. So my steel numbers, US, four, five cars, one. Obviously that equals a quarter, because that's just the, the same fraction. All right, so uh, how many cars am I giving up to make up uh, one ton of steel? Quarter, okay. And then in the case of the um, Chinese, they got five, they did 10, that equals two. Wait, did that backwards, I did backwards, my bad. Yep. Cars go up here. And the steel goes on the bottom, equals half. All right. <clears throat> How many cars do they give up to make a thing of steel? The Chinese. They give up half a car. All right. So you would actually say that the United States uh, has an advantage in steel production because uh, they make the steel much more efficiently. All right. Because they can use the, uh, they make four units of steel instead of one car, whereas the Chinese only make half. Or, or sorry, they make a quarter, whereas the Chinese only make a half. So they actually have a comparative advantage in steel. So this means that China, since they make cars more efficiently in the US, they should focus on producing cars. Where are they gonna get their steel then? US. From the US, right. Because the US uh, can make steel more efficiently than they can make cars, all right? Uh, they give up more cars to make the steel. So the steel is actually better for them. They have a comparative advantage uh, in US steel. All right, and again, who has the absolute advantage for steel? Absolute advantage, who makes more than the other? Could make more. Oh, China. China. And who could make more cars than the other? China, China again. Steel and cars. So that's how you'd actually figure it out. You're seeing what they would give up uh, to make the other item, whatever it is. And you could, you could do anything. We could do this again, too, with something different. <clears throat> All right, so let's change up the numbers and see if you guys can figure it out. So we'll make it Japan and Germany. Wait, no, that sounds too World War II. Let's go uh, Japan and Russia. And let's go with, let's go with, what are they making? Computers? Or? What else could they make? Lumber. Make lumber? All right, they can produce lumber, fair enough. All right, so let's say Japan can make um, 80 computers, or with that same amount of labor and effort, they can make 20 tons of lumber. All right. Russia can make 20 computers or uh, 20 tons of lumber. Yeah. Tons of lumber. All right. What we can figure one out right away. Uh, who has the comparative advantage for computers? Japan. Japan, because they can make more. Who's got the comparative advantage for lumber? Japan. Japan again, because they can make more. All right. But the comparative advantage. How could I do that? Divide what by what? Okay, cool. So you just take uh, these two numbers and divide them. All right, so for, to make 80 computers, they can make uh, 20 tons of lumber uh, equals five, sorry, not five. Nice math. Four uh, computers for one unit of lumber. Four computers uh, for one unit of lumber. Because that's what would be low, there would be the one. All right, so four computers or one thing of lumber, okay? 
That's cool. What about Russia? 20 divided by 10. 20 divided by 10, sweet. 20 divided by 10 equals 2 over 1, which is 2. So for two computers, Russia can produce one ton of lumber. All right. So who has the comparative advantage in making lumber? Who makes lumber more efficiently? Who gives up less computers to make lumber? Uh, Russia. Russia does, yes. So Russia actually, because they can make two computers or one thing of lumber. They're giving up two computers to make one unit of lumber. Japan makes computers way more efficiently, all right, because they can make four computers for one thing of lumber. So that means Japan, since they can make uh, computers more efficiently, they have the competitive advan or comparative advantage uh, for um, computers and lumber. The competitive uh, comparative advantage is actually Russia. All right, because Russia only gives up uh, two computers to make one thing of lumber, Japan gives up four computers to make one thing of lumber. So they should definitely make computers because they can make more of them and more cheaply. Russia should then instead focus on lumber. All right, because it's twenty or ten. It's not twenty and ten. All right. Does that make sense? At least as far as what a compar comparative advantage is, because you can actually be losing on both as far as an absolute goes, but if you look at, you know, compared to, you can see which one you make better. So Russia should focus on the lumber, Japan should focus on the computers, that's kind of how it is anyway in real life as far as what they can make. All right. <clears throat> Last thing is, what does it look like on a graph? Because you will have to look at one of these graphs at least for the uh, midterm and final uh, and probably in another format as well. So. Um, I could take these numbers, but I'm, I'm going to make it even simpler. I'm going to ignore these numbers for a second. So if I'm going to figure out <clears throat> what this would look like on a graph, let's change these numbers so a little easier, though, just for the purpose of this graph. All right, so forget this part. We're just looking at Russia making um, computers or lumber, all right, 20 apiece. Let's just say it's the same. Give up one computer. Uh, to make one ton of lumber, or you give it one ton of lumber to make one computer, it's just a one-one trade, it's easy. On a graph, it looked like this. So this is for opportunity cost, right? Because by making one, you give up the other. Okay, so what I would do is I would do my standard like supply-demand graph, but I'm not putting price in or anything like that. I'm just looking at these two things, all right? So my two goods are lumber in tons and one computer. All right, so how would I do this? I could go like this, move this up a little bit. So I've got um, zero, obviously down here, that's the exact same, that bottom point's always gonna be zero, just like it is on a supply and demand curve. Um, and then I'll do my um, units here. So I'll go in tens just to make it simple. So 10 tons of lumber in the middle, 20 tons of lumber would be over here. Uh, for computers, 10 computers in the middle, and 20 is over here at the top. Right. So that's how many I can make. All right. And if I make one, I give up the other opportunity cost. So what I would do is I would uh, connect the two highest numbers, and it's both 20, so that's easy. So I just go from 20, and I connect it down here to 20. All right. And I use this just like a supply and demand curve. All right. So <clears throat> what if I said, here's the question. I'll give you three questions. My question is one, two, three. I could use this graph to figure out uh, what my opportunity cost is. So um, if I made 20 computers, I would be left with how much lumber? If I made 10 computers, I'd be left with this much lumber. If I made 10 tons of lumber, left with this many computers. Now look at the fourth question. If I take 20 tons of lumber, how many computers do I have? I could just use this graph pretty easily. All right, so if I get a question and say, okay, you're looking at Russia in this case. So Russia, Russian production. Right, it's opportunity cost. If they make one, they can't make the other. So I could just look at this graph and we made it real easy so it's the exact same on both sides. But uh, 
I, I would look at it just like a supply and demand graph. So for number one, they're asking how, many, how much lumber can I produce if I make 20 uh, computers? So I just look on the graph. I find computers, there it is. I find the 20, right, 20 computers. And I make my point. There it is, that's point, we'll say that's point A. All right. How many uh, tons of lumber am I producing at that point? Zero. Zero, right, it's just boom, on the lumber, it's right on zero, so that's just my answer. Right, zero lumber in that point. All right, <clears throat> let's look at 10 computers, all right? So I go up and if I'm making 10 computers, it's gonna touch the line here, right? That'll be point B. Uh, roughly how many tons of lumber am I making at that point? 10. 10, right. It's just like a supply and demand graph, right? 10. Cool. And then uh, obviously since this graph is um, perfectly symmetrical, it's gonna be the same. If I want to look at lumber, I just start down here instead. Oh, if I, for 10 uh, tons of lumber, I would go up, match it. Oh, it goes to point B, which means I'm making 10 computers as well. All right, what about 20 tons of lumber? Where would I find that? Zero computers. Right, because where's my point gonna be? On the uh, x-axis. On the x-axis? On which point? 20. 20, yeah, exactly, that'd be point C in this case. Cool, so yeah, got 20 lumber, I got zero computers. All right, that's how you would read the graph. And just so you know what this graph is called, I don't know if there's a question on it, I think there might be. This graph here. It's not called a supply and demand curve. It's called a production possibilities uh, curve or frontier. We'll, we'll do frontier because you probably know curve. And that's all that is. That's how you would actually look at opportunity cost on a graph. All right. And we could, of course, do the numbers we had earlier, like with the 80 and the 20, but it would just make it look different. Uh, but it's the same idea. Because I could give any number. I could say, well, what about a five, right? Let's say I made five. Um, 15 here, five, 15. Let's say I made uh, five tons of lumber. How much? How many computers am I making? So where's my lumber? Right here. I'm making five. <coughs> I just marked myself. I'm making five. I would go up and it touches roughly here-ish, which would be 15 computers. All right, that's all you do. That's how you use it. And again, it's called a production possibilities frontier. That's your opportunity cost. Any questions about that? Sweet. That's it. That's our notes for the week. And we got a bunch of extra time to review, and you guys can make some badass websites too uh, tomorrow and Thursday.